Once upon a time, there was a pair of adventurous researchers. They had participants do a very unique experiment. The participants were told they had to train rats to quickly make it through a maze. They told half the participants they had maze bright rats that were carefully bred to be highly adept at completing mazes. The other half of the participants were told they had maze dull rats with no training on maze completion at all. The participants had five days to train the rats to complete their mazes. After those five days, the maze bright rats were able to complete their task twice as fast as the maze dull rats. Pretty predictable, right? Well, as with most good experiments, the researchers played a little trick on the participants. There was absolutely no difference between the rats. Both groups got randomly selected rats with no maze experience at all. Yes, you heard that right. The rats were exactly the same, but the participants who were told they had faster rats somehow helped those rats actually perform faster. This concept has been repeated over and over again. It's called an expectancy effect. An expectancy effect is when a participant expects to have a certain kind of outcome and without realizing it, changes their actions and behaviors to actually get this exact outcome. This concept gives us a lot of power. When participants were told they had maze bright rats, without realizing it, they changed their training changed their expectation, and made the rats perform better. When participants were told they had maze dull rats, without realizing it, they became worse teachers and didn't train their rats as well. Dozens of studies have proven the expectancy effect outside the lab with rats, dogs, and humans alike. Here's my big idea. We can improve or damage the performance of our teams, employees, and colleagues simply with the power of our own beliefs. How to get people to exceed your expectations. If you believe someone will perform poorly, you make it almost impossible for them to exceed your expectations. If you believe someone will perform well, you set them up for success and make it easier for them to exceed your expectations. The single biggest mistake leaders make is this. They assume the worst. And the problem is that leaders are often brought in to fix problems. They're asked to lead a quote, low performing team. They're asked to train a quote, inexperienced group of newbies. They're asked to fix a quote, problem area of the business. If you want to truly be an incredible leader, you can't just think about solutions or ideas. You have to address your own expectations. Here's how. Step number one, what are your expectations? We're often not aware of our own expectations. In the rat experiment, participants were told explicitly they had either maze bright or maze dull rats. This was an explicit expectation, but we have both explicit and implicit expectations driving us. An explicit expectation is when something is directly stated and leaves no room for uncertainty. An implicit expectation is when something is implied but not directly stated. For example, I have an explicit expectation that ice cream is tasty but not very healthy because I have been told this by both advertisers, the tasty part, and my mom, the unhealthy part. I also have an implicit expectation that ice cream sometimes makes my tummy hurt and I might be lactose intolerant. This is a silly example, but it gives you an idea of how we have expectations that are forced upon us and ones that we come up with ourselves. I want you to identify both your implicit and explicit expectations in the important areas of your life. For example, if you work on a team, what were you told about the work team in the beginning? What do people say about your work team? What is described about your work team? These are your explicit expectations. Take out a sheet of paper and write down everything you can think of. If it's a creative team, for example, you might have bullets like this. I was told it's the top creative team in the agency. I heard it's small and intimate. People say we are fast paced and a bit cutthroat. Fill in the blank for your team or topic. Set number two, what are your implicit beliefs? 
Now let's identify your implicit expectations and beliefs. What ideas have you formed while working with your team? These are much harder to identify, so you'll have to dig deep. Ask yourself what expectations you have. What have you learned? What assumptions do you have? Let's take the creative team for example. You might notice that you expect greatness from the team, but also hurt feelings when things need to get done quickly. You have learned to hoard your ideas, lest they be stolen. You assume people will do great work, but you might not always get credit. These are incredibly important because they will dictate your future. You might have had one bad experience that made you form an expectation. That means that one bad experience is actually setting a precedent instead of staying as a standalone incident. This can be both good and bad. If you expect the team to be cutthroat, you'll be looking for that behavior and maybe even driving it. But if you think your team is great, they're more likely to be great. Step number three, positive or negative? Now it's time to identify which of your expectations serve you and which ones damage you. Go through your list of explicit and implicit beliefs. Circle all the positive ones and underline the negative ones. Try to build on the positive list as much as possible. Can you add more details, more examples, more stories? You want to leverage those positive ones because they will then turn into even more positive outcomes. The negative ones need a different process. Pull out the negative expectations and put them on a new piece of paper one by one. For the creative team, this might be feelings get hurt when things need to get done quickly. Ideas can be stolen. You have to fight to get the credit you deserve. Make sure this list is complete. Any other worries, negatives, or bad expectations you have, pause the video if you have to and add them all right now. Step number four, argue with yourself. We wanna know if your bad expectations are actually true or assumed from one or two bad experiences. Author Annie Duke outlines a set of hard-hitting questions in her book, Thinking in Bets, and we can use these to identify our biases and challenge the accuracy of our beliefs. Answer these three questions for each of your expectations. Why might my belief not be true? What sources of information could I have missed or minimized on the way to reaching my belief? What are the reasons someone else could have a different belief What's their support and why might they be right instead of me? The point here is for you to argue with yourself, challenge your belief, take the stance of a naysayer and shut down each of your expectations. Hopefully this will bring some questions back into your expectations. Can you turn some of those bad expectations into single experiences rather than assumptions? Step number five, eliminate. Any lurking negative expectation will drag you down. You must either eliminate them with the argue with yourself exercise or actively work to fix them. If you don't work on eradicating bad expectations, they will fester and grow like a fungus under the floorboards. It will get bigger and bigger until it makes you sick. Leaders must especially address these for themselves and their team. Once you've done this for yourself, you should also do this exercise with your team. What are the expectations, both implicit and explicit, that the group has? What assumptions are being made? What's lurking? Here's how this could work with a team. Let's say you sit down to talk to your sales team. You have them watch this video. Hi team. First, you go through the explicit bias exercise together. You can have people do these on flashcards anonymously or write answers on a whiteboard or flip chart. Fill in the blank. I was told about this team. I hear about this team. People say about this team. To keep a safe space, you could even have people write their answers on note cards and put them in a box instead of calling them out loud. Then the team leader can read them out loud. Remember, you'll hear both good and bad. For a sales team, you might hear, I was told the team hadn't changed in 50 years. People say the team is the most important part of the business. I heard the team was unfriendly. Next, ask people to identify their implicit expectations. This might take more time and should definitely be done anonymously with cards. Fill in the blank. I expect, I have learned, 
I assume. A sales team member might say, when I come to work, I expect to be bored. I have learned to keep personal and professional lives separate working on this team. I assume all team members are incredibly loyal. With these, the goal is to work together as a team to come up with alternate evidence for the negative ones and celebrate the positive ones. The positive ones should be put up, get high fives, and be repeated. The negative ones need to go through the final steps. They need to be discussed, addressed, and fixed. This might happen over a few meetings or a few one-on-ones. That's good. Sometimes expectations can take a bit to eradicate, but it's worth the effort. I hope this exercise has been powerful for you, and I can't wait for you to do it with your team. Remember, as a growing leader, you have the power to change expectations, and those expectations shape our reality. If you liked this video, please click the subscribe button below and click on one of these amazing videos up next.